This is the front brake master cylinder. I forgot to push the button whenever I was taking this off to actually record it, but I removed the lever, the mirror, the brake light switch, took the line off of it, took the cap off to drain the lines, and this is what I found in there. It is pretty gooshy. A lot of junk in there. Now this will come off here. I don't know if it's gonna come off without braking or not, but we're gonna give it a shot. Then we'll be left with just this. All right, we were able to pull this off. And this just sits down in there. The screws that hold the cap on hold it actually on. And it sits down and it has an O-ring in here. And this O-ring gets kind of funky over time and it starts leaking the brake fluid out. And that's what's contaminated all this. This also was pretty gooshy on the inside. We have uh, quite a bit of buildup in here. We're gonna clean that out. We got a new, cell, the new uh, kit for this. And we're gonna replace the piston and all the seals and everything in it and clean it all up. And then we're gonna do the same thing to the calipers as well. We're gonna get in here and replace all the rubbers and the calipers. And we also have the seals for these as well, the slider pins. We have those. So we're gonna go through all those and also go through the forks as well. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? Well, come along for the ride. Alrighty, we're gonna try to get this master cylinder apart. <clears throat> First of all, there's a boot that sits in here. We're gonna pop that sweetheart out. Wow, that came out pretty good. Then there is a snap ring down in here. Hmm. Not sure which way it's heading. Looks like the ends of the snap ring might be over here. No, the ends are right up there. Alrighty. Now we have an idea of where we're hunting. Let's go hunting. Can't really tell where the ends really are. There is one end. Ah, I got it. Hot dog, look at that. There's our piston and everything, and yeah, we can see all the way through it. Outside being dirty doesn't look too bad. I turned on the ultrasonic cleaner, but it's got a long ways to go to warm up. Let's see if we can get the calipers apart. feel good. I'll tell you what, today I'm about as organized as a fart in a whirlwind. There's stuff everywhere. That one moved. That one eventually moved. Yep, get a punch. I reckon this one ought to do the job. these over and tap them on out. There's one. And then the toughy. Not sure why everything feels like it needs to fight back. There's our other brake pads. Get in here where I can see. Maybe it's kind of stuck in there. Well, let's get something that's not really a punch and use it as a punch. Ah, a silicone covered screwdriver, that should do it. Yeah. That's it. Bada bing, bada boom. There's one of our pins. There's the other one. Now then, let's go ahead and pop this caliper off the bracket. We got a 14 and a 12 here. Feel like a power tool coming on.
Not too bad. Mm, not too good either. Let's see if we can go ahead and, whoo, that baby's hung up too. Get the assistance of a punch here. Jeez, if I could hit something once in a while, that would have come out a lot easier. That's pretty dry. You always have the seal out of there. Now then, the real challenge starts. We gotta pop those babies out. Alrighty, let's see what happens. My rubber tip come off, so this may be less effective than it used to be, and probably a lot messier. Nope, nobody's moving. I wonder if I can use my rag to help seal it up. Well, that one I think moved a tiny bit. The tiny bits aren't much. My towel decided to catch on fire. If you're doing this at home or doing it yourself, don't do this. That's my best advice. Just don't do it. At least don't do it like I do it. Don't use me as a model. Well, we got one. There's one. Bet it's hot. Now, let's peel out this inside or the outside seal. Yeah, that baby's causing a problem. Here, he's popped out. Yeah, the other one, maybe, won't be quite so bad. Let's wipe our piston off real quick. Just to get the worst of the junk off of it. Now we'll attempt to set this baby back in there and put a board in there and then we'll pop the other one out. Everything seems hot. There we go. That one shouldn't be as bad now. We need that piston to go in just a touch more so my board fits in. That should do it. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and heat this one up some more because I know it's a stuck son of a gun. Set that back out of the way. I'm going to turn this around so I can better manage my heat and not burn my towel up. Now that aluminum collar takes that heat away very fast. So we need to get this about right. We're gonna flip this back around like this. Keep that board in place if we can. Flip this sweetheart over. Golly, the list is getting long of what we're gonna do. See if the other one pop out. There we go. She's out. Now this one, Shouldn't be stuck as bad. We'll get a hold of the very edge of him and see if we can get him to pull out of there. While everything is still rocket hot. Oh, look at that. Woo! Did I mention it's rocket hot? I can tell where I touched it without the rag. That one's back out. There we go. Couple of pistons popped out of there. Now I'll go ahead and uh, these outside ones, they're usually the culprit. And what's happening here is brake fluid with age gets in here and it crystallizes like that. And when it does that, it grows in behind the O-ring and pushes the O-ring up harder against the piston. 
and then it can't hardly work right. These seals start to fail when they get really hard, and that's what lets the brake fluid out there to start with, out to that second one. And these square ones, yeah, these are pretty crusty too on the outside edge. But fluid slowly migrates past those when they get old. They get hard, and uh, these just leak. And they leak past and get underneath that other ring, and it gets it all bound up. All kinds of bad things are bound to happen at that point. I'm going to pull this anti-judder springy thingy out of here. Did I mention this thing's hot? There's one caliper torn down. Let's see if we can get the other one popped apart real quick. This one has a lot less pad on it. All right, that's going to be the same story. 10 millimeter wrench. Take the retainer bolt out, pop this clip off, tap these. That one's not bad. That one's bad. It's moving, but they don't want to. Let's grab a little chunk of 4x4 four four here. <laughs> I was grabbing a hold of this one like it's hot too, but it's not hot yet. Maybe. This son of a gun will hold still better if I hang that edge over there a little bit. Are you still in frame? No, not really. Now you are. Now we're down in the wood. What if I could just lay him over the edge here? Like that. Use our knot punch here. Get the brake pad, uh, pads out of the way. There we go, the other pin's out. He just got stuff built up on him. It has to get too big for his hole. Let's pop these out and we'll have our bracket off there. 12 first this time. Anybody seen our other socket? There it is. Where's our bracket? Oh, this one's all gooshy. Yeah, it's not doing so good. There. Really bobber off there. Let's go ahead and drive our pin out. This one. There we go. This one is a hot mess. Just a mess. It's not hot. You know what I mean, man. All right. We're going to turn this around like this again. We're going to attempt to pop those out of there without applying any heat. Not a chance. We've got a ton of brake fluid still in there. Let me see if I can shake some out real quick. No, not really. All right, let's apply some heat. See if we can get one of these to pop out. Nope. All right, we're gonna apply some heat and see what happens. We're gonna concentrate on this piston first. See if we can pop that sweetest out of here. You can see it's starting to smoke just a little bit down around the piston there. See that right there? That's probably enough. It's not liquid yet, so it's not horrible. I keep forgetting that it's going to be hot. There's one. Then we'll take the outer one out once again. The dust seal, if you will. This is kind of a dust seal, and the other one's kind of an oil seal. Whoa, that's probably hot. I don't want it to run away or have to grab it with my hand. Yeah, see it's got all that junk in there? Ah. 
We'll peel that one seal out, and then we're going to, well, let's clean this off just a touch before we go sticking it back in there. It's not rocket hot, but she's hot. Whew. Back that in far enough to get our board in here. We'll use this end. Yep, that'll work. All we got to do is heat up this one now. Pretty sure this is one we heated up before. And the other one come out. This one might be a bit stubborn. I'm gonna catch my rag on fire. All right, let's give that a shot. Let's see, they are doing about there. Get that head down so it don't take off across the shop. That'd be less than good. Like that. Hey, caramba. Makes for excitement, if nothing else. And once again, we'll flip this baby over. Get our pliers after this one on the very edge of it. Nope, probably should never do this, by the way. There we go, she's apart. Let's peel our other O-rings out of here. Then we'll give all this a ride in an ultrasonic cleaner. Yep, I think that'll do it. There's pretty much the front brake system. Going for a bath. All right, we got these out. We got them rinsed and dried. And uh, I am going to take and clean out these grooves that the O-rings set in. Because they still got a lot of junk in them. All right, to do that, I'm going to use a Dremel with a little brush on it. It's a very light bristled brush. It's not going to tear up the aluminum. But uh, see what gear we want this on. We're just going to go in here. We're going to want this on a, a little higher setting than that. And clean out these little O-ring grooves. I just want to clean those out until I see more, more dust flying out of there. We could go ahead and give these a little bit of a wipe down too. But I'm going to go in there and just grab that and that groove. Try to work it around. Smells like brake fluid. Powdered brake fluid. And that'll pretty much do it for our O-ring grooves, but it really makes them nice and gets all the junk out of them. And this thing's light enough, it's not really taking out aluminum, it's just cleaning up the junk. You see, in these grooves we got, it doesn't quite get all the way down in the very corners. So if we come here with a pick and just work it around to make sure all our little corners are cleaned out there. Now I think I'm going to take my brush and clean these up too. We have K&L kits for our front brake master cylinder and also for our calipers. And one of the reasons I like using the K&L is they are made in Japan, but they still cost less than what the OEM stuff costs. Considerably less. And we have all that. <laughs> I like the fact that comes already on there. That thing's a pain in the butt. So our spring sits in here, and this has a cap on the end of it, and that is going to sit right inside there. And this is going to go in first, our spring. We want to lube all this stuff up with a little bit of brake fluid. And we happen to have some uh, Honda DOT4 brake fluid here. That's exactly what we need. We're going to pour just a little bit of that into the cap that I just pulled off the brake fluid. And that'll give us some dipping sauce in order to put this stuff together. First thing I want to do is put just a little bit around this piston seal. 
And then we want to put some around this next one. This is the one that keeps her from leaking out the back side. There will be brake fluid in here, but this seal stops her from coming out the back. So we'll set this inside our spring. It's not going to stay there, but I just I like setting it in there. We'll slide that in there. Kind of like so. You need to make sure that goes down in there and doesn't get its lip caught on the edge of the hole. So I'm just going to turn it and work it in until I feel it pop in there. Kind of like that. That's started in there now. We're going to take our piston and do the same thing. But we need to get our snap ring ready because it's not going to stay in without that sweetheart. With that, we need our snap ring pliers right here. And I want to go ahead and start this on here. I don't know if it's going to stay or not, but yeah, I'm going to give it a shot. So we're going to take this piston now and just push it down in here. We're going to get the other one started in there. Hopefully we can just kind of wiggle it in place. Push on a little bit and wiggle. There it went in. Hot dog. I need to hold that in there while I get my snap ring started. Then we'll set our snap ring down in there, make sure it's in the groove. I do believe it is. And that works like it should. We got a boot we got to put on here. Use something a little less sharp to push this bottom portion down in here. And that's what it should look like. Now we got to put our cop top on. We've got a new O-ring to go in here as well. It sets down in the groove here. Kind of like that. Sets down in here and then I didn't get this washed out yet. So I want to wash this out real quick and then we'll be right back. All right, we've got this washed out a little bit. And we'll do the same thing. Oh man, I dumped my brake fluid out. I sit down on the lid and I put my pliers down on it. We're going to loop that up and then we're going to set this together. This thing is not in fantastic condition. And I don't remember if that surface goes to the front or back. It's going to go like that. And then you just kind of squeeze all this together. Like that. And the screws go all the way through this into the base to hold the lid on. And that holds the whole thing together. So that's that done. Let's move on to a caliper. We're going to lube up these with brake fluid. I mean, they're going to live in it from now on, so they might as well get used to it now, huh? Don't need a tremendous amount, just enough to get them lubed well. It's always times that right about now I think, you know what? I probably should have put some gloves on to keep my hands cleaner. But that's what I always think of it, after my hands are dirty. All right, let's grab the big ones and we'll pop those back in here. Like that, you wanna make sure that they're all laying in here nice and smooth. Make sure they're not buckled over on their side. I take one finger and I set it in there and I push it down into the groove on the bottom part. And then the rest will kind of follow in place. When you get it all in there, it'll kind of fall in place. Right there it didn't. But that was set down real nice. If you lube these, a little bit of brake fluid before you start, it makes a huge difference. We'll work this sweetheart in there. And these are the ones that typically bind up. Sit on the edge. That one went in real nice. He's in. Do the same thing on this one. Set him in there. Choop, doop, doop, doop. Feel around. Make sure it's setting down smooth. And it is setting pretty nice. These pistons we've already cleaned up. So we're going to take I just set them with my thumb. And start them down in here. And I can kind of wiggle and poke and prod. Make sure that the seals don't climb up on the sides of the piston that you're not trying to chop one off as you're putting it together. 
just keep wiggling and poking and it'll slide in. If it don't slide in without a tremendous, it doesn't take a tremendous amount of force. If it doesn't slide in fairly easy, stop, something's wrong. We're past the first seal. There we go, just like that. That one's in there. We'll do the same thing to the next one. Then we will uh, mount them up to the brackets. Put the pins in and all that nice stuff. Once again, we're gonna lube up all our seals. This is just dot four brake fluid. Straight from the mothership. The magical elixir from Honda. You might ask, why are we using Honda fluid? It's because we're working on a Honda motorcycle. If we're working on a Suzuki, we probably use Suzuki fluid. And I definitely do that with oil. On motorcycles more than cars. I don't think the aftermarket oils are really super great when it comes to motorcycles. Now, some of it probably is, but uh, that's going to be some rather expensive brands. I don't run synthetic oils. I just run normal oils. And I've never, ever had a problem. Never had an oil-related failure. See, this one's not sitting in right. He's kind of up on the edge. Kind of, there he goes. Make sure he's down. If you don't, you're going to clip it with that piston and you're going to cut it if you try to push it in real hard. This one's the same story. There, he's down pretty nice. Piston on my thumb. Start it in there. Get it past both seals. Goes right in. Same thing on this one. This one with them, I'm gonna wiggle and watch for it to go past that first seal. Then I'm gonna do the second one. And in they are. Now, question is, is this the right or left one? I bet it's the opposite of this one. I think that'd be right. Let me hold it up to the bike and make sure. Well, hard to tell if the fork's off, but I'm pretty sure that's right. So this bracket goes with this one. These holes are pretty clean. I'm pretty happy with that. We are going to put some grease in there. Get our grease out and do a little bit of lube in here. I want to put some down in that hole. Right there. Hopefully you can see what I'm messing with. Then I'm going to take a pick and just work it down in there. I'm going to take this oil and just or grease and just work it down in there. I'm going to go ahead and grab my other bracket. Do the same thing to it. When you put these pins in, they'll push that grease down through there too. So I'm just wanting to get it started down that hole real good. Kind of get it away from the area of the seal. Because I want to clean all this up on the outside. There we go. Set that one back aside. We know this is the left one. Now then we have these three seals and they're all just a little bit different this one i believe is the one that goes in this hole i could be wrong if you ask my wife she'll tell you i am definitely wrong it really doesn't matter about what just probably wrong anyway and then we got these that set through this hole jeevers on the we got these set into this hole right here, and this slides back and forth on those. We'll make sure we lube this as well, but we're just gonna lube this. We're not gonna go crazy with it. We're just gonna make sure it has a nice coating on it. That's pretty much it, just like that. That's all it needs, it's way more than it had. We're gonna set that aside for a moment. We're gonna slide this into this hole. Gonna get that started down in there. And we're gonna slide our pin in from the opposite direction. Now we can see down in this hole, we don't quite have that sitting in there right. 
We're going to push it down. There we go. We'll need this to slide past the inner portion of that without pushing it out. There went part of it. There we go. It did push it out a bit, though. That's too bad. There we go. It didn't push it out that time. Now we've got to run this pin clear through. Get it out of that groove. Run it in far enough that we can get this one in. We'll work this one in this side. It sits in a groove in there. It's all pop back out. And then we got to run it back through this way without it popping this one out. And sure enough, it did pop it out. There, the first part of it's through. Let's see if we can get through without pushing the rest out. Oh, look at that. Second time is a charm on this one. Then we want to let that set in there so that's in both sides of that. And it can rock back and forth and be sealed up yet. That's the goal. Alrighty, we have both of those in there. Now then, these pins sit down inside the hole on the bracket. So we're going to put just a little lube on this baby. Not a lot, because the seal's going to take most of it back off anyway. Then, we're going to take, put this in the hole here. And I am going to make this come up here. Like so. Come on, baby. Make it go in without pushing that seal out. Then we'll work it down. We can push that on in like that. Some air is going to get trapped in there. You want to kind of make this thing fart to get the air out of there. Pick up the edge of that boot, the pick, without poking a hole in it. And that way that air can get out of there. I think that's right. Work that down. We'll grab a ratchet and we'll snug those up. That's pretty good. There we go. That's one caliper done. This will slide back and forth in that bracket like it's supposed to. Now I'm telling you, when you're doing brakes, if you're doing the pistons, you probably need to do these too. Check them. They almost always are rod enough they have holes in them. But that's pretty much how you rebuild the brake system on this thing. We did the rear ones. Check out that video. And then this is the front. Uh, we also have our bleeders. We have new bleeder caps, but the bleeders, they're going to go in the bleeder holes back here. Just like that. The other one's going to do the same thing. Our clips are going after our brake pads, and that's pretty much it. Guys, thanks for watching. You know, I really appreciate it. I like showing people how to do this stuff, and maybe you can learn a thing or two. A lot of this stuff, I do not do it like the book says to do it. So make sure you follow the manufacturer's recommended instructions. Follow all the torque specs and all the provisions provided in the service manuals. But I do it how I do it. Is it the right way? Yeah, mostly, but it not, may not be 100% right. So take whatever advice you're getting from this channel with just a little bit of a grain of salt and make sure you double check everything according to the manufacturer specifications. Thank you for watching and God bless.